the Amazon is being burned. And I know some of you in the States are thinking, well, good. Jeff Bezos needs to be taken down a peg or 12. Jeff Bezos has had a controlled burn on worker rights and wages for a while now. But it's not that Amazon. It's the rainforest. You know, the rainforest with unending secrets of biodiversity and connections to nature and provides the globe with 20% of its oxygen. Yeah, that's being burned. And look, there's a few people out there that are saying, well, this is natural, but not at this alarming rate. You know, let's not normalize mass rainforest burns that have increased by 84% in one year. Okay, look, if one of your testicles grew by 84% in one year, I don't think we'd be celebrating your one big ball. Okay, we'd be panicking and freaking out and probably trying a bunch of weird creams from Etsy's shaman section to get it back to normal. The burning is being done by farmers, loggers, and ranchers as part of the annual burning day. Emboldened by the current president's words of expansion and privatization, they are burning about three football fields worth of the Amazon a minute. And if this was even one actual football field, America would go nuts. If, if, it, if the Pittsburgh Steelers field was on fire, there would be fans dressed in black and gold head to toe with buckets of water and stale yingling dousing the field in a matter of minutes. But since this is just a planet's lungs and we can see the smoke from space, we're just over-exaggerating the situation and need to chill the fuck out, everybody. So if it's not natural, who's the culprit? Part of the blame falls on dictatorial and f the fascist leadership of Brazil, spearheaded by Jair Bolsonaro. Bolsonaro looks like if uh, Mr. Rogers fused with Emperor Palpatine, okay, and nobody wants to be this guy's neighbor because he'll have you murdered for looking at him too flamboyantly or with an indigenous stare. Bolsonaro is part of a long line of far-right leadership that has advocated for the expansion of Brazil into the Amazon rainforest. This has caused friction with not only the natives that live there, but also nature. Nature is super pissed at us and is probably cooking up a plan for revenge while we cook ourselves alive. Since the 30s, the logging industry has mowed their way westward into Amazon, and it particularly got bad in the 80s. Using chainsaws to cut down small trees and then bulldozing the rest, this level of rain deforestation caused an increase of fires that spread across a vast portion of the Amazon. And in the wake, grass seeds were sowed, and now there are pastures that are being sold to ranchers. The indigenous, indigenous of the lands went from about a million at the top of the century to 200,000 in population by the 80s. And basically, it went from having a tapestry of plant life down to just one plant, grass, which makes grass like the white supremacists of the plant kingdom, right? Damn it, grass, okay? You allied yourself with colonialism to kill the diversity that you were once a part of. The sentiment from the indigenous is that the light-skinned Brazilian leadership look down on the natives because they don't build, believe in agribusness or uh, a monetary system to rule their society. And there have been protests and acts of civil disobedience from the natives uh, that have ended in bloodshed. And with Bolsonaro, a military commander who looks fondly on the coup of 1964, things are unfortunately going to get more aggressive. He has militarized the Ministry of the Environment with officers of the San Paolo Military Police, which means the Amazon is going to be the newest victim of police brutality, right? With the expanse, expansive burning of the rainforest that's happening right now, that's, that's like the I can't breathe and the logging industry is Officer Pantaleo's illegal chokehold. And the rangers themselves face major restrictions and regulations on what they can and can't do with the land. They are at the mercy of Bolsonaro and his militaristic environmentalism. So why is logging bad? I mean, people like logs, right? They, they help with fire. 
log cabins. If it wasn't for log cabins, uh, then then Lincoln would have never come up with the Emancipation Proclamation and ended slavery. Okay, and th- and then where would we be hmm? if slavery never ended? Where would America be? Huh? Okay, so there's a, a good reason that logging at the rate that it's being done is detrimental to the Amazon, and it's connected to the natural way rainforests work. During photosynthesis, trees and plants release water vapor. The more water vapor that is released, the more water they pull up from the ground. Evergreen and pine trees, like the ones we see in the States, release less water and are more conservative about it. This probably also explains why America is overall more conservative and individualistic, right? Even, Even our plants can't think about the rest of the world. But in a rainforest, the plants and trees absorb and release more water, which means that they can create a lot more rain, hence the term rainforest. The climate around the rainforest can be warm, but this process actually cools the ground off. So during the dry seasons, there are forest fires. They're usually not ever expanding, and nature kind of manages it all by itself. Since there's been more logging, that means less trees can absorb water and release it into the air. Thus, the cooling of the forest doesn't occur, and the dry seasons get longer and more brutal. I guess Bolsonaro wants the forest climate to be just as like his political climate that he's creating. Brutal, smoky, intolerable, and on fire. This is kind of basic elementary school knowledge, too. Logging companies and fossil fund companies are ignoring which means that large corporations that have partnered with large political leaders have less intellect than a third grader or an eight-year-old. And if, if you have a certain, if you have to be at a certain age to be president or a member of Congress, most people that go against the idea of man-made climate change should be ousted from office and forced to repeat kindergarten. The logging and deforestation industry has been going on for a long time in Brazil, and most of that activity is illegal. Bolsonaro was funded by these companies and is now protecting the donors and flipping the blame of these forest fires on nonprofits that are fighting for indigenous rights. He went so far as firing the head of the Brazilian space program that pointed out the excessive deforestation and how it's affecting the Amazon. Bolsonaro claimed that he was lying and trying to besmirch the name of Brazil. Bolsonaro called the scientist a conspiracist that was trying to make the government look bad. And true, this scientist was trying to make the government look bad, but Bolsonaro is straight up succeeding. I mean, you can't pretend like your government is actively wrecking the planet with its non-environment and pro-indigenous merger and say it's not bad. That's like if you were in the corner of the room masturbating vehemently and someone called you out on the ma- on the fact that you were masturbating in the room, and your response is, well, you're just one of those man-hating, anti-penis feminists. You, you need men to make babies. What a buzzkill. Look, regardless of whether they are feminist or anti-penis, it doesn't change the fact that you are jacking it hard in the corner of the room. And it's not just logging. It's also gold and diamond mining that are polluting and cutting down the forest, which begs the question, are we still mining gold? I mean, are, are, are you just, is this just a big prospector industry that's out there with overalls wrecking through the Amazon with their pickaxes just going, gold, everybody, gold. I mean, if I, I feel like we could probably just send those people home. You know, we that that's a deportation situation in Brazil. I think, you, I think that one... That one might be an easy fight to win. This is part of Bolsonaro's plan to fully privatize the country and letting the free market control where the country goes. Apparently, the free market wants us all dead because willingly burning the Amazon will spectacularly fuck up the planet's climate and eco-diversity. But even the left-wing worker party leaders that were ousted by an internal coup, Lula and Dilma, had plans to industrialize Brazil through a variety of private contracts and economic neoliberal structures. 
They wanted to clear the Amazon for big business development projects and build a dam because that's what the Amazon was really missing, a development project that involved an arcade bar and hipster coffee shops instead of trees that were absorbing one quarter of the world's CO2. The fires got so high that the smoke from these fires reached San Paolo a few hundred kilometers away. And most recently, they're approaching Bolivia's borders as well. And, t- and a- as a way to escape criticism, Bolsonaro sent out fighter jets with water to douse the Amazon, similar to how I assume the fans of the Pittsburgh Steelers would douse the stadium it- with yingling if the stadium was to catch on fire. He released, and he's also releasing uh, troops into the Amazon, apparently to fight fire with a firefight. So what could we do to help the situation? Honestly, I'm not sure. There are some calling for a trade boycott with Brazil, especially when it comes to lumber, beef, soy, and mineral goods. I'm not sure if that's a good idea or not, but there is some decent logic behind why it could work. Right? Bolsonaro and his cohorts don't care about environmentalism. They care about profits and control. So if we hit them in their pockets or even the pockets of the working class, their support might turn. But the question remains whether the people of Brazil need to suffer suffer a swift kick in the economic ass to show that a literal fire has been lit under said ass. Maybe. I'm honestly not sure. Glenn Greenwald's husband, David Miranda, has proposed a simple idea. Since these rich industrialized countries in in the Americas and Europe need the Amazon for their profits, they should support and help the poor Brazilian communities in the Amazon rather than destroy it. The Amazon is their asset, and if it's going to continue to be, then the people, then its people and its environment need to be protected. Perhaps the answer lies within this, and probably other plans of action to preserve and regrow the rainforest that has to be spearheaded by the indigenous people that know the land the best. And this is not just about the indigenous of the Amazon states in Brazil. It is about all of us. We live in a global ecosystem. And if we burn through our lungs, then what's left for us to breathe with? The iron lung of neoliberalism and colonization won't help us out for long. We need to work with these natural systems rather than think we can do outdo them.